So uh, should we buy or sell the retail ETF? So first off, read this disclaimer very carefully. And do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So here is the retail ETF. It's in the consumer cyclicals, 9% from the 52 week low, minus 40% away from the highs. And on average, these consumer cyclical ETFs are minus 41% away from the highs, which means that we definitively have a bear market. This is more than double the criteria of being in a bear market. So here is the XRT, the retail ETF. Um, look at this red 200 week moving average. Uh, here uh, in 2016 and uh, 2017, it was a major battle zone. Uh, and you can see that the interaction with the moving average was very surgical. It was just an amazing place to put on your short positions. As things improved, it was an amazing place to go long. You could go long there and more often than not, you could make uh, money. And when it became resistance, you could make money going short. So it obviously is a moving average that matters. And when we fast forward to our current time, we have an absolutely amazing one and a two and a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, you could even count 10 interactions with that moving average. So yes, the red 200 week moving average, it's a huge deal. The bears have not been able to like fully break it and turn it into resistance yet. Um, we are still above it. So I will give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, but that is completely contingent on them being able to stay above that moving average. We have seen from the history of the XRT that losing the red 200 week, it's bad. You, you don't want to lose that support. Looking at the daily data points here, we are below all the moving averages. Um, something that I can see here, let me just draw that in. Uh, we do have some horizontal support here. Support back here, 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 and here. So it's a pretty interesting uh, level on the dailies, but it's a mess. It's a very messy situation here on the dailies for sure. We have a bunch of resistance above us. So I think that the primary event is now on the weekly data points. Uh, we do have a big MACD buy signal here. Uh, haven't seen much um, rally so far. Um, if we go here to the daily data points, uh, here we are. Yeah, so MACD is a mess. We were so close to getting a buy signal here, but then we lost it. So that's not that, that good. Uh, accumulation distribution is showing uh, some uh, virility, but not much. Um, Looking at the 20 day PPO here in purple, it's it's at an interesting level, but uh, the main event is un undoubtedly here on the red 200 week moving average. So in my notes, I write that the entry signal and stop loss is 200 weekly moving average support. We are still at support. I give the technicals a six to the bulls, but it is completely contingent on that moving average. Losing it would be really bad for the bulls. Let's look at the seasonality. So to the, the right here, over the last five years in green, seven years in blue, and 10 years in red, we see that season seasonally, we usually have some weakness into the 22nd of September, but that is coming you know, pretty, pretty close. Uh, you know, It's not that far away. And then you do have some strength into the later part of September. Uh, to the left here, over the last five years, September is a weak month, but October is one of the strongest months for the CTF. Over the last 10 years, October and November are strong months. Big picture, the last 17 years, September is the weakest month, but October and November are, uh, they are pretty strong uh, comparatively. So I give the bulls a three here on the seasonality. It's more bullish than bearish. Um, it's interesting. It, it's a bit messy, but uh, definitively it's more favorable to bullish than bearish uh, trades. Uh, so let's look at the fundamentals. So we are comparing the RXI, which is the Global Consumer Discretionary ETF, with, you know, the XRT, the Retail ETF. Looking at performance year to date, um, RXRT is underperforming the RXI, uh, losing more. 
looking at beta, beta is significantly higher here on the XRT. Price earnings is way higher here on the RXI though. Uh, dividend yield is very similar, so not much yield here. Looking at the holdings, 101 versus 147. Um, some market differences you see here that uh, Tesla is considered consumer discretionary. It is true that cars are consumer discretionary. Um, and Tesla is especially a very discretionary car purchase. You, you don't really need a Tesla. Um, so let's go further down here on the list. Yeah, I mean, you do definitely have a bit of a difference here in diversification. Um, yeah, retail is only 24% here on the RXI and 92% on the XRT. Um, broad uh, exposure here to different uh, market caps on the XRT. You see here that RXI is uh, very dominated by uh, America, notwithstanding that it is a you know a global um, uh, ETF. I think I will give the bears a minus one here on the fundamentals, but if, when it comes to the fundamentals, there weren't like any kind of major uh, differences here. Here though, um, a lot of plus pros and cons on, on both. Let's look at relative performance. So uh, we start off here with the statistical correlations, uh, weekly data points, uh, we do have 92% with the S&P 500, 95% with RXI, you know, the global consumer discretionary ETF. Uh, and let's compare it to the XLI, which is um, a consumer discretionary ETF uh, that is very like America based, uh, well, consisting of American companies. It's so 93% correlation with that one. Uh, and then you do have a minus 38% with the dollar index. Daily data points, 95% with S&P 500, 94% with RXI, 94% here with XLI, and minus 80% here with the dollar index. Looking short and long term, the correlation that was strongest was with the RXI. So what happens with the RXI is very likely going to affect the XRT. On the topic of the red 200 week moving average, in this case, uh, it's there's a major battle here between the bulls and the bears, and uh, the battle here is more even. Um, um, so yeah, uh, major war on that moving average. On the daily data points, uh, the bulls have recently lost the blue 100 day moving average. Mm. So it's a bit of a different setup here. Um, on the RXI for sure. Uh, you see that there's this chaos actually here as well with uh, the MACD. Uh, had a bit of a buy signal, but then it was just uh, broken down again. Now let's now compare the XRT with the RXI. Uh, it's a bit up and down really, all over the place here. Recently we have definitively seen a period of the XRT underperforming, the RXI uh, lower highs and lower lows. Uh, so yeah, overall, yeah, it's uh, it's there's a bearish uh, trend between these uh, two. Let's look at the seasonality. Yeah, in red over the last ten, blue over the last seven, green over the last five years, the XRT usually outperforms uh, the RXI into late September. Then there's some give back, and then there's a strong seasonality into later uh, November. Uh, so there's some interesting seasonality there. Uh, then we compare the RXI with um, the WT, and the WT is the global stock market ETF. So you can see that um, there usually are some time cycles here. So let's see how uh, consistent they are. And there is some consistency here in the time cycles. Not surgical, but uh, there usually is like a protracted period of outperformance from the RXI. Looking at the MACD, the previous times where these uh, periods of outperformance failed, it usually was in the upper end of the RXI. So there's a possibility here that we could see, you know, a, more outperformance here from the RXI versus global stocks. Uh, the seasonality is clearly bearish here uh, into the 13th of October, uh, which usually begins a stronger period for uh, consumer uh, discretionaries. Uh, the data we got on relative performance, it was a bit messy. I will give it slightly to the bulls, but 
Uh, there's so many, maybe, you know, up and down things happening with these. Uh, I think that what was interesting is that there's, there's a possibility of uh, the global uh, consumer discretionary is outperforming uh, global stocks. So that's the most b- the bullish thing. We do end up with a 2.3 here in favor of the bulls. The entry signal and stop loss is a 200 weekly moving average support. If it holds good, if it were to break, we have seen in the past with the XRT that the bears really like to short at that resistance level. So we have some time left. Uh, so let's uh, scan through some uh, technical uh, opportunities. In order to make a decision, you of course have to do a complete analysis. Look at the fundamentals, uh, seasonality, relative performance, uh, the whole, uh, the full works. So here is Carvana. It's um, e-commerce uh, store for cars. Um, this looks uh, interesting in the sense that uh, we have horizontal uh, support way back here from this low, uh, and you can see what happened after that low. It was very very viable back here as well also very viable here you know a bit viable so the current price level it does have a history of being very profitable the biggest profit was definitively here buying it you could have gained yeah 1033 percent yeah that's pretty good so from a purely technical standpoint carvana looks interesting if we go here to the daily data points uh, you see that there's a convergence here of moving averages. Uh, the problem is that they are all now uh, resistance levels. So there are bulls, uh, but the question is whether we have enough bulls. So it's not clean. It's, it's not it's not a clean bullish opportunities, but it is it is bullish ish. Ares Dex uh, sporting goods. Um, what is interesting here, if we go here to the daily data points, uh, let me get my drawing tool like that. This is a variation of a uh, uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern. It is a bullish technical pattern. Uh, when we look at history of uh, this uh, stock, we, we can see that inverse head and shoulders patterns, uh, they have you know emerged here, you know, here in the past. Um, so, so there is some precedence of them working. If we zoom in a bit here, you can see that uh, when we pulled back on Friday, uh, the 20 day moving average in purple was the support level. So this is an interesting level. Um, we have already seen a big rally, so it's a bit late to the party, but then again, we have seen inverse and head and shoulders. So, uh, you see here back as well between you know 2019 and uh, 2020 we've, we formed a very major inverse head and shoulders um so i think this is interesting but um yeah uh, to be determined uh, for sure ARS right aid corporation uh, you see that it's been public for a long uh, time uh, seeing big rallies big sell-offs uh, are there reliable time cycles here yeah, I mean, there are time cycles differing a bit, but what is interesting at this point is that we are testing a very major uh, support level. Uh, you can see that there's horizontal support back here from 2019 and also here back in 2009. So during, you know, that global bear market, you know, we did see right, right aid form a low at these levels and it was very viable. When we zoom in here, you could further make the case that this looks a bit like a major uh, double bottom pattern. Um, so there's something interesting here uh, looking at the, the daily data points. There's been uh, a lot of bearish pressure on the blue 100 day moving average. Recently, the bulls have been able to use it as a, as a support level. So there's something afoot here with right aid. So we have looked uh, through some, um, you know, various uh, perspectives on the XRT. Uh, so a bit of a in-depth analysis. Uh, then we looked at the underlying stocks and 
What is interesting is that quite a few of these stocks are very broken down and there are some bullish opportunities here. Um, so, so it is definitively interesting. Um, the thing is that these support levels that were found, they are the type of support levels that if they do not hold, then we will see substantially lower levels. Losing like a long-term support level is you know, very, very, very bad and will lead to a lot of you know, longer-term investors also just pulling out their money. So XRT is definitively one to have on your radar uh, because substantial moves could happen.